So, Marcel, you are CG modelling lead mm. on Solo. I'm interested you brought a actual model with you. Mm -hmm. Do, how much, I, I guess to the layman, those skills wouldn't transfer? Yeah, I, I would say the, you know, practical modeling, you know, skill, mm -hmm. it's very, you know, essential for the CG modeling as well. Okay. Uh -huh. So you started off working on models, like as a boy? Uh, yeah, just as a hobby, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love to model the plastic scale model kit, you know, real life tank, you know, uh, airplane, jet planes, you know, ships, those kind of stuff. And how did that develop into CG modeling? Yeah, very important thing is, uh, you know, observing the stuff, you know, the training your eye yes. to see the, you know, actual real life stuff. And then that's good for, that, that is very helpful to, you know, create something new in the, you know, virtual CG world. Okay, so is the skills that you learned modeling more with your eyes or is there like your hands, is it a total different type of skill to do the modeling in a computer compared to on a physical model? I think it's uh, not, dif you know, different. It's the uh, same, just that uh, you, you are doing practically or just doing a virtually on the computer. I think I would say it's the same skill. Okay, yeah. just a different brush. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right, yeah. Very interesting. Yes. Do Actually, you... I, 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 I am, uh, you know, the US, you know, scale, scale model contest winner. <laughs> you say that again? <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, you know, the winner of the 2004 U.S. Uh, National Scale Modeling Contest. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, that, what? That's why Lucasfilm, you know, the, you know. <laughs> what, model did, what, what model did you that paint to win a that? big uh, battleship on the big uh, diorama, mm -hmm. you know, sea. I created all sea surface with uh, three big, you know, battleships, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Do you um, sort of long for the, the days in the 80s when uh, mm. Phil Tippett and, and, and those guys were making models or, yeah. do, or do you love the... I, actually, my dream was, you know, uh, to become the practical model builder. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, the era is finished and now everything is CG, so I have to do the... I have to do the CG modeling instead. So in working on Solo, you had the very iconic established mm -hmm. Millennium Falcon, mm -hmm. and you had the task of like retrofitting it to be newer or mm -hmm. older, but still yeah. stay in the proportions of the, mm -hmm. the vehicle that we know now. Mm -hmm. What challenges did that? Yeah, the biggest challenge is was, you know, how to transform Land Falcon to, you know, Episode 4 Millennium Falcon. Mm -hmm. So the way we took is uh, we bring the CG, you know, Episode 7 CG Falcon and then put uh, and then remove all covers, uh, panels, mm -hmm. and then put the, uh, uh, we call the Gribris. It's a uh, uh, very detailed, uh, make uh, uh, interior mm -hmm. and then make uh, Han Solo's, you know, Falcon first, or oh, actually later. But that Falcon was a uh, total 600 million polys uh, with uh, 21,000 parts. And then, other hand, other, I, so I have to put that Millennium Falcon into Lando's Falcon. Mm -hmm. So we put, you know, panels uh, about, uh, about one feet above the, you know, surface of the Millennium Falcon, uh, original Falcon, and then created a new uh, land Falcon. And then put the uh, escape port uh, into the mandibles, mm -hmm. uh, the, the front, you know. Uh, the concept was, you know, the hand uh, Falcon, the concept was, uh, you know, the uh, most fastest ship in the universe with a piece of junk look, right? So that is reflect, you know, uh, 
Han's characteristics. But this time, uh, the Landos, uh, we have to, you know, reflect the Landos characteristic, which is the most uh, beautiful ship in the universe, uh, with uh, you know sleek, uh, nice, stylish uh, look. With uh, everything you know, new uh, interior of outside, you know, everything is so. It's a completely 180 degree difference from the Hans Falcon and then uh, Landos Falcon. So, so that was uh, yeah, pretty challenging. You know, how yeah. to, you know. Uh, show that difference, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's almost clothing for each character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, the biggest challenge uh, of the, yeah, I, I said the how to transform that one. So we, we decided to create eight different stage, staging uh, to, from the Landos Falcon the final, to the final, you know, the Hans Falcon with, uh, you know, many gribbly stuff. Mm -hmm. So that means we had to create eight different, you know, asset, and then the biggest challenge was, oh, so there, I said, uh, you know, Land Falcon has uh, uh, twelve thousand parts, and the Hans Falcon uh, has uh, ended up about uh, twenty-one thousand parts. I had to create seventeen thousand parts uh, for the transition, so total. There are fifty thousand parts uh, to create that Kessel Run effect. The nightmare was how to. So we created the eight different stage by uh, turning visibility visibility on and off of the, those fifty thousand parts. So that you know managing that visibility control was totally nightmare and then it took uh, 120 days to you know complete uh, all asset from the Rando Falcon to the Hans Falcon 120 days just for uh, the creating ship. the model yeah before mm -hmm. it then starts mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. wow yeah. i was very interested when he goes through the Kessel run mm -hmm. how the damage mm -hmm. and how intricate the damage reflects that Star Wars Millennium mm -hmm. Falcon. How much thought did you put into that? All right, so this is a, a, a replica of the uh, episode four of Millennium Falcon, original Falcon uh, look like. Uh, this one has a you know, round uh, antenna uh, facing to the front. And then uh, actually there are Three, three legs here, and then on the other hand, this uh, Lando's Falcon. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a legs here, but uh, it has one, two, three, four, five legs. And then during the Kessel Run, uh, she, you know, uh, lost two front, you know, gears, and then become the three leg falcon in the episode four. Mm -hmm. And also the antenna uh, was the same, you know, round dish, but it's facing the top. And then, yeah, this one also, you know, the lost in the Kessel Run, and then Hang and Chewie put a new, you know, uh, antenna here for the episode five, uh, four. Actually, uh, in episode six, uh, during the death, this star, you know, trench run. Yes. Uh, uh, she hit the something and then this, you know, removed. And then uh, in the episode seven, the uh, Force Awaken, uh, she has a whole new, you know, uh, rectangle antenna mm. instead of that. One. It, it, it so seems that, like the radar dish is just mm. a bad design because it just keeps <laughs> getting knocked off. <laughs> Hey you guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, there are plenty more to come. So make sure you hit subscribe and check in with us at Tuesdays and Fridays as we go live with the latest Star Wars news on Hyper News. And for podcast listeners, please check out the award-winning Steel Wars podcast with hundreds of interviews with Star Wars actors, behind the scenes people and fans. That's available at steelwars.com, iTunes, or wherever good or bad podcasts are found. Now, click every link on this window and watch, watch it all. It's all good stuff. Totally great.
quick. Quick. 